Today's reading is from De Deuteronomy 26, 1 through 11. Please feel free to read along by turning to page 180 in the Old Testament portion of the Hebrew Bible. <coughs> when you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of, the, of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving to you, and you shall put it in a basket, and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time, and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand, and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien. Few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly, treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us to, into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God, and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. May the spirit of wisdom guide our understanding of the scripture. prayer just now, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, wherever they might be, that they'd all be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you remain our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You remember the day, right? You were all cuddled up. You were warm. Your tummy was full. It was nice and dark, just the way you like it. You could hear that one familiar voice, muffled and in the distance, but the voice that gave you so much comfort. The one, the voice that helped you know everything was going to be okay. The one that would, that would sing to you every now and then. Maybe, maybe you had just dozed off. Or, or maybe you had just discovered, I don't know, your fingers. It was perfect. When all of a sudden, the walls began to shake. It started to get colder. And from somewhere below, there was a source of of bright light. You began to move as if you were being pushed. You, you got yourself stuck in this very narrow place. And you turned over and went down head first. It was a place so small you could hardly breathe. And, and, then, and then all of a sudden you fell. You fell into this cold, bright place. Something, someone grabbed you from behind and flipped you over. All these shadowy creatures everywhere you looked, off in the distance nearby, they had felt this sharp pain on your backside. Ow! And then, then you did something that you had never, ever done before. You didn't even know you had it in you. You screamed at the top of your lungs. Oh, that day, 
that awful day. Do any of you remember that day? It happened for each one of you. That terrible, awful, wonderful day when, when everything you knew and loved about the world came abruptly to an end. And you went from not having a care in all of creation to being this, this, this alien dropped into a brand new world. Each of us, of course not all of us, but each of us here managed to survive that experience of, of being born an alien. We managed to get used to things like getting hungry, demanding to be fed. We got used to being cold every now and then and loved it when we got warmed up by a body or a blanket or maybe both. We began to recognize the faces that were around most of the time. We didn't like it much, but we got used to being handed around, held up in the air. We weren't sure about that whole being left in the dark to fall asleep by ourselves thing. We squawked for a while, and it worked for a while. But it began to take longer and longer to get a response from those people that gave us the most comfort. And then when they did come, they started not looking all that happy anymore. <laughs> So we went ahead and gave it a try, and the next thing we knew, it was daylight again. And all of that was going just fine, just fine, kind of adjusted to all that. But then that day came, that next day, that day came when, when we left our house like we'd done before, but we got dropped off by the people we love seeing the most. They just, they just left us. And the next thing we knew, we were in a room full of strangers. There were little people like us and big people moving around. Once again, we were the alien dropped into a whole new world. Oh, the trauma. Finally, we got used to that world. The, the gnats, the other people, the playmates, people that looked like us. Got to where we could stand up on our own two feet. Almost got to where we took a step, but then the person said, no, no, you have to wait for mom you know, to do that. <laughs> Before long, we were trotted off to an even larger room full of even more strangers, and we were an alien once again. Other kids who looked like us, but more this time. And we had to do things like sit still in a circle and listen. We did get to get projects that we'd take home to that first place, that place we call home. So that was good. But but then it was then it was about time to, to get used to, to that world and, and we were off to a brand new school, I think they called it. And once again we were dropped like an alien into a foreign land. Backpacks, lunch boxes, riding a bus became a thing. Then we graduated from one school to the next and then to the next. And each time we were dropped off into this brand new world each time like the aliens we were. Oh, we have been aliens so often. Some of us moved away from home, maybe off to a place called college, maybe we moved into our own place on the other side of town. Some of us might have gone into the Air Force or the Navy. We had to deal with things like roommates and dining halls and public transportation. So many steps along the way in this, in this journey we call life and we were introduced to a brand new world. And at least for a while, we were the aliens, strangers in a strange land, finding our way. Can you ever remember feeling like an alien? In one way, the text that Kathy read for us is is a rehearsal of the Jewish people, the, the Jewish tribe becoming a nation. A wandering Aramean went down into a foreign place called Egypt and lived there as an alien. And there became a nation, great and, and mighty and populous. But just about the same time we got used to that status quo, here come the Egyptians 
treating us harshly, afflicting us, imposing hard labor upon us. Things like learning how to walk and write and read. Things like learning chemistry and manners and socially acceptable behavior. It all was so hard and so we cried out. And the God of our ancestors heard our cry and brought us out of the land of our affliction with a, a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Mom, she came. She actually came and picked us up at the end of the day like she said she would. Mommy. Dad somehow knew how to call at the perfect time. Hey, Dad. And the next thing we know, we've been brought out of our misery into a land flowing with milk and honey. How many times, how many times have we been dropped into a world like an alien? How many worlds have we adjusted to the worlds of middle school and marriage and mortgages? How many times have, have we been at a place where life was hard and we cried out? How many times has someone heard our cry and come to us with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm? And, with signs and wonders and brought us into a new place, a land flowing with milk and honey. Until it was time to be an alien again. The story in the book of Deuteronomy is, it's not only the rehearsal of, of the making of a nation, it's also an invitation for each of us to rehearse our own stories as a way of generating thankfulness and generosity. Think about it. How many times have we felt like strangers in a strange land and been welcomed by the kid down the street or the neighbor next door? How often have we felt the mighty hand and the outstretched arm of someone who came to deliver us from whatever trial we happened to be facing? Maybe it was the choir singing happy birthday or, or the kids surprising us on our anniversary or a phone call coming at just the right time. And so today, for that story, we give thanks. Today we give thanks for all those people who from the very early days of our lives, from the beginning, have made us who we are. We give thanks for parents and siblings and cousins and, and aunts and uncles. We look around at the friends who have been there when we've needed them the most. We think of all the times we've been lifted up out of nowhere from a time of trial that had come our way. Whenever, whenever we wonder about the goodness of life, and life sometimes unfolds in a way that makes us wonder, go ahead, rehearse your story. Rehearse it from the beginning. Rehearse the story in a way that reminds you of all the amazing number of people who have made, made us who we are. The people who've fed us and forgiven us. The people who've taught us and teased us. The people who have held us and held us accountable. The people who've needed us and made us feel valuable. All those who make up the story of our lives, just think about the ways they've taken us and made us who we are. And then... Let us give thanks. Give thanks. First, by demonstrating generosity in our own way of being, giving away the first fruits, as the book of Deuteronomy might say, and then by finding and welcoming anyone who has that alien look about them, a stranger in a strange land, woven into the fabric of the Hebrew nation. Did you hear? Aliens were supposed to be welcome at that first table of Thanksgiving. Woven into the fabric of the nation was the command to welcome others as they had been so welcomed. And Jesus came out of the same tradition, steeped in the command to welcome strangers. And he made that same welcome the hallmark of his ministry. And so, this Thanksgiving, so go around the table and offer the things for which we are thankful. Let us give thanks for the alien we've not yet met. The stranger in the strange land. And the welcome that will be ours to offer.